It has been just over a year since Balenciaga made mainstream news regarding their scandals involving their campaigns. And I've had a lot of time to think regarding Balenciaga. And I've actually found it incredibly interesting to watch from a business standpoint, how they have managed to begin to claw their way back into the hearts, minds, and wallets of everyday consumers. But actually more than anything, I think I found it incredibly fascinating to watch the reaction from just everyday people watching this unfold, especially when it comes to the major celebrities that have been in support of Balenciaga. Are Balenciaga back? After the huge controversy surrounded the brand late last year, we've not seen them spoken about much at all. They've deleted the apology off their page. I did not know that Balenciaga got uncancelled. I hate to say it, but I really, really, really love the new Balenciaga show. So we're going to be touching on a range of different topics today and looking at different angles of this specific issue. If you actually don't know what I'm referring to, I'm going to give you a little bit of a, a rundown in a nutshell. But for those of you who do remember or you're very well versed in this particular scandal, I'm going to have chapters down below. So feel free to skip ahead if you if you want to skip over this part. And also, if you aren't familiar what I'm talking about and you want to do a more of a deep dive, because this is just kind of like the bones, but there is so much. There is so much out there. There are so many TikToks. There's so many deep dive videos. There are so many conspiracy videos on this particular topic. If you wanted to fall down that rabbit hole, I highly recommend. In November 2022, Balenciaga showcased an ad campaign featuring images of children that appear to be dressed in harnesses and accessories that to some people looked very BDSM inspired, but to some they passed them off as merely gothic and edgy. So really this one kind of depends on your own personal opinion and your own perception of the world. In the last video I did about Balenciaga, I had a few different opinions and I would love for you to share with me yours in the comments down below now that we're like over a year on from the scandal. Did you think it leaned more just like harmless and fun, edgy, gothic, or do you think it leaned into more of a disturbing territory? I'd love to hear where you, where you land on this in the comments down below. Campaign's imagery combined with the unfortunate placement of a Balenciaga bag atop what appeared to be Supreme Court documents in a separate shoot that related to child pornography. The hashtag cancel Balenciaga trended on Twitter and TikTok as accusations of condoning I need to be really creative with my wording here, but hopefully you can put two and two together. Ketotelia. Let's just call it Ketotelia. Accusations of condoning Ketotelia and child exploitation flooded the internet. I think there are basically like three main sides to this argument from what I can see. It's despicable, it's unforgivable, it's disgusting, it's disturbing. The second argument is it was merely an accident. The third is that you know, it was the fault of say one person or a particular group of people within Balenciaga and within this kind of ad campaign and the entire company as a whole should be punished and it shouldn't be overshadowing the entire company and that, you know, innocent people that work for Balenciaga shouldn't be punished for this specific scandal. I would love to hear what side you lean more towards. Are you more like A, B or C? The brand acknowledged that the plush bears should not have been featured with children in the campaign. The brand did partner with the National Children's Alliance for a three year collaboration, emphasizing its commitment to children's safety and wellbeing. Enhanced editorial controls and educational programs was initiated to prevent such controversies from reoccurring. However, Demna still remains as creative director. Their winter 2023 fashion show did seem more toned down and less weird in my opinion than the spring summer 2023 show that was premiered before the scandal. A lot of you have probably seen this but check out this mess. Ooh, scary. I'm scared. I checked out some of the comments under these two like fashion shows. The nude pumps and neutral fishnet is going to be my next purchase. Well, a cheaper version, I mean. If only Master would free me by giving me Balenciaga. This one as well. I mean, can somebody, I know, maybe I'm an uncultured swine, but what on earth does this mean? Are you ready? Are you ready? I think it's official. Welcome back, Debna. It's been tough for a minute, we know. This collection is doubtless in the pure essence of your mastercraft and vision, devoid of pretentious apology and submission, the blatant truth that emanates from your body of work until thus far I stand. With a love heart. Sorry, what? <laughs> what? Sometimes I feel like these high fashion shows and some of the comments and some of the critiques that I see 
I just find it all a bit too like artsy fartsy, a bit too pretentious, like a giant wank fest, if I do say so myself. Like, look, I like fashion in the sense that I like things that are pretty. Okay, look at me in my little purple striped caftan. I like pretty things. Okay, I do. I don't understand the the deeper meanings and the deconstructions. I lost withstand unpretentious apologies and devoid of blah 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 like what maybe it's just not meant for peasants like me to understand <laughs> but it just i can't help but chuckle sometimes it just does seem like a giant wank fest all in the name of art in 2023 they were dipping their toes back into the water and were seen on a few celebrities here and there throughout 2023. Coming off the back of the most recent fashion show in LA, it definitely was a star-studded affair. I think LA was an interesting choice, personally. I mean, again, like I said, I'm an uncultured swine. I'm sure that, you know, the experts, the fashion experts will tell you it's because of the collaboration with Air One, which it probably was, and you know, the, the LA street inspired look and blah, 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 blah. I mean, they're probably right, who am I to know anyway, but it just seems weirdly convenient to me that it was in LA where obviously a lot of celebrities reside and it was a lot easier for these said celebrities to, to show up to this event, to be part of this event, to make a wave and make make this known you know if you're going to want celebrities to be at your fashion show and you're trying to claw your way back it just seems like making it as convenient and as easy as it possibly can for celebrities to attend seems like a smart choice and look the irony is not lost on me that this show took place in the home of hollywood aka what a lot of people call it holly weird holly weird a lot of people believe that celebrities sell their soul for fame you know we've heard the doja cat song there's a few conspiracies rolling around you know satan worshiping and there's also been talk I'm gonna try really hard with my wording keto rings and uh x trafficking and the rings and, and all that a lot of this kind of became a lot more well known a lot more talked about with in the last few years with the whole you know jeffrey epstein case and that kind of just being blown wide open but anyway i digress celebrities like kim kardashian obviously kendall jenner was also there and nicole kidman who had recently been announced as their newest ambassador i saw cole sprouse cardi b and many others were in attendance and while kim kardashian does appear to be getting a lot of the heat for still riding with balenciaga there are a lot of other celebrities who are almost going untouched and unspoken about who have been wearing Balenciaga and who have been seen in Balenciaga. I think it was last year Pink did an interview on the Kelly Clarkson show and she was actually wearing Balenciaga and isn't this it's just strange the assumptions we make as human beings but I weirdly just assumed that Pink would not be someone who would be publicly wearing Balenciaga. Again I don't know the woman but it's just funny that I had this assumption and this kind of perception that she would just be someone who wouldn't wear it. Also shocked me last year and I heard no one talk about this. There was a specific Travis Kelsey game that Taylor Swift attended and she wore a specific corset to one of his games. And now the corset didn't have like branding on it. It wasn't noticeably Balenciaga, but it was still Balenciaga. And I find that to be a very interesting choice. Like I was truly shocked by that. And I think to me, what was most shocking was because Taylor Swift is an incredibly intelligent woman, okay? And she is very in touch with her audience and the normies. Plants, Easter eggs, left, right, and center. And I don't think this was an accident. Like, I don't think she did this without knowing about what happened. So I did find it to be an incredibly interesting choice. And we know that, like I said with the Easter eggs, Taylor Swift is incredibly strategic. Whether you love her or you hate her, you gotta admit, okay, she's highly intelligent and she's very strategic. So this seemed like a strategic move. No one really talked about it. But then I guess, you know, Taylor Swift has such a big fan base that to a lot of her fans, she can do no wrong. So this was not really spoken about. But I, like I said, I find it very interesting because that corset, there was nothing overly special about it in the sense that, you know, you could probably find, especially Taylor Swift, could find a corset like that from a lot of other brands, but she purposely chose Balenciaga. And that's kind of when I started to wonder, why was that? Why is that? And that's why I started to kind of, my clog started turning about this. And I started to really notice what celebrities were getting more pushback versus the ones that weren't. Did she wear it for money? Was she paid to wear it? 
She was recently, somewhat recently, announced a billionaire. Why do you think she wore it? Do you think it's simply because she just liked it, didn't think twice about it, was unaware? Or do you think there is a deeper strategic reason as to why she wore it? We can make the argument that cancel culture is toxic and canceling a brand with, you know, a hundred plus years of history and a heritage over a mistake, as they called it, you know, that, that was made in 2022, doesn't make any sense. It is being argued that all should be forgiven and forgotten. And the team that were involved in this scandal are deeply apologetic, have, have apologized and have tried to right their wrongs. It's also been alleged that everybody that is involved in this particular scandal has been terminated. It was also being said that this one, you know, minor quote unquote hiccup, if that's what some people will think of it as, is not the only misstep. And, you know, leading up to this scandal, there were some questionable things going on, okay? Whether they, you know, they weren't necessarily illegal or they weren't really inherently, like, obviously bad. But Balenciaga for a few years have really been kind of towing the line on edgy and shocking. They were really towing the line on kind of like the weird and the creepy and the unusual. It's really a world away from where Balenciaga began. The old Balenciaga can't come to the phone right now. Why? Because they're literally dead. Like check out this side by side, how they started, where they are now. Like it's literally worlds away. And that's why I also, I also find it incredibly fascinating and I'm not immune to this. As human beings, we really tie so much meaning to, to history and heritage and the roots of, of a brand, even if that heritage and, and those roots are almost unrecognizable or almost non-existent anymore, we still kind of hold on to that as people. And we still kind of put so much meaning around that. To me, they're not the same brand. Like they're literally now doing collabs with Air One and making overpriced towel skirts, like these brands are not the same. There is an argument to be made that I've personally made in the past for certain artists, which is, you know, love the art, not the artist. But I think for a lot of people, including myself, it, it's almost a little bit harder to compartmentalize this when the artist and the controversy is almost like intertwined into the art, you know, like this ad campaign was for a lot of people quite disturbing and shocking and it was intertwined. You know, there are some artists who, have really shocking, you know, borderline illegal or damaging or evil backgrounds, personal lives, family lives, histories, you know, this dates back to freaking Picasso. But it usually doesn't interfere with the, the art itself. This is where it can be a problem because the disturbing nature for a lot of people is actually intertwined into the art itself. This is a theory I have. I think one of the reasons why this scandal became so mainstream you know, there's a lot of things that happen in the fashion world that don't really ever make up past kind of like the fashion bubble. But I think part of the reason why this became so mainstream is because we all know, like we all know evil exists, you know, like we all know that child slave labor exists. You know, a lot of us right now are probably wearing something that involves sweatshops or, you know, unethical practices. You know, if you're watching me right now on an iPhone or, you know, you're holding an iPad or you're watching me on an iPad or on a MacBook or something, you know, we all kind of know, like a lot of us know about, you know, Apple's shady practices and their history. Usually we're far removed from the situation. We're far enough removed away that we're almost unable to really grasp the, the situation. And, you know, there is a little bit of that cognitive dissonance there. You know, it's, it's, it's easier to, to not feel as invested emotionally in something when you don't actually see it with your own eyes. I, mean, I know online shopping like literally reigns supreme. But sometimes I, th I think, as messed up as this sounds, sometimes I wonder if, you know, if Zara, Forever 21, you know, Sheen doesn't have a, a physical store, but if they did, sometimes I wonder if, if people would purchase as much and if it would be as easier to purchase from, from fast fashion stores, especially in the, in the, you know, the amounts that people do, if say like behind the cash register, there was like a giant glass wall window and you saw the sweatshop like you saw the the women and the children you know who are severely underpaid and severely worked and you saw the looks on their faces like i wonder if that would be harder to hand over the credit card and kind of make and follow through with their transaction if you were literally faced like faced with it if it was like staring you in the face and i think that's why for a lot of people this scandal was so mainstream you know it was literally it was slapping you in the face and you know i think what else kind of made it quite shocking for people is we know, like I said, you know, 
sweatshops, child slave labor. Like we know those things exist. And I think this is why the scandal was so mainstream and it was so controversial is because it was literally staring us in the face. Even though no children were actually harmed in the campaign, a lot of people saw it as an insinuation, you know, insinuating harming children. To some it was, it was subtle and it was artsy and it was edgy and it was more gothic, but to others it was literally child porn and it was very much insinuating a dark, a dark world. And it's not really ever something that's thought about when it comes to fashion. You know, when you, when you think of fashion, like at best, you think of, you know, history, heritage, creativity, beauty. You think of inspiration, you know, at worst, you think of polluting the planet, fast fashion, sweatshops, you know, the damage it does to our environment. But you never really think about children in that way. You know, it's never something we think of. And I think that's why it was, for a lot of people, so left field and so shocking. I know this may sound negative, but we live in a world now where there is so much evil, you know, there's so much corruption, there's so much darkness. And if we were to simply sit down, and I mean, not even the fashion space, if you were look to, to look at every industry, you will find some dark, weird, creepy, illegal things. And we just cannot, we simply can't as human beings live our lives and also have the same level of energy for everything. You know, it would actually be exhausting. We simply, I personally believe we simply could not do it. Which is why I think a lot of people just let go of the pushback, lost their emotion for it if they were even angry at, at it in the beginning, you know, maybe they were shocked. Um, or maybe they just don't, they, they don't have the energy because a lot of us cannot have the energy for everything that is happening in this world, all the bad. We simply can't. We literally drive ourselves mad. Switching gears a, a little bit, but I think this is a little bit of a different kind of weird, but did anybody hear, did anyone see, you know that high fashion, I don't even know his name, he's, there's this high fashion designer who came out with a line of clothing, so like t-shirts, hoodies, various other things, and it was, I don't even want to say basically referencing, because it was like flat out referencing a school, again, trying to be careful with my wording, that happened in Columbine in 1999. The entire line sold out, and it was clearly inspired by the particular event, and the words on the shirts were some of the final words that one particular victim spoke before she passed. I think the t-shirts retailed for approximately $600 US and like I said, they sold out. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this in the comments down below, but I personally think profiting off of a tragedy is sick, okay? And I don't know, maybe you disagree, but this to me, like there is no way that this shirt is not in inspired by that event. Like it literally has the text and then it's got the name, the, the incident, like in small text underneath. And I just think profiting off a tragedy is disgusting, okay? Like I said, this entire line sold out. And maybe I didn't, maybe I missed something, okay? Maybe I didn't see anything personally. I didn't see anything on the website um, in the little blurb that, you know, oh, these, the, the proceeds from this particular sale will go to that particular school, the victim's families, nothing like that. Could be wrong, maybe it did. But I saw nothing like that. And to me, it just seemed like the artist, the designer was profit, profiting off this particular tragedy. And to me, I find that disgusting. It begs me to ask the question, like, why, why would anyone want to wear that? Why, why? Tell me, please, please, someone give me their opinion. Like my thought is, you know, is it because they want to genuinely raise awareness? for the issues in our world right now surrounding schools and children's and specific laws? Or is it genuinely because they are looking for attention, shock value, they wanna stand out, they wanna be different, they wanna be edgy? Call me cynical, call me negative, but I kinda of think it's the latter. You know, obviously there are influencers who are still wearing their Balenciaga and still in support of Balenciaga, but I think a lot of fashion influencers are kind of, not necessarily speaking out about Balenciaga, but are, you know, refraining from wearing their pieces, refraining from attending fashion shows, just refraining from, supporting Balenciaga publicly. And I think it's because for influencers, they relate more, they relate more to normies, okay? Normies, us, you and I, are the consumers of their content. And we are the reason they're in the position they're in. We technically help to generate, we generate profit for their business, which is their Instagram career. So I think they want to, they want to be a bit careful. Some influencers, I mean, some influencers that are that large or they simply just don't care. But a lot of influencers, I think, are still in that realm of relating to the normies. And, you know, if their audience doesn't necessarily support Balenciaga, then they don't really want to cause waves. But celebrities are, like I said, you know, a whole nother ball game. And I don't know, like, I don't know if they're just so big and powerful that they're just so out of touch, or they genuinely just don't care. I think when you're at that level of like fame and wealth, almost anything can be shrugged off, excused, you know, looked the other way, forgiven, forgotten, kind of thing. Looking to celebrities for a moral high ground is not the place to, to be, okay? Like, you think that celebrities are back on with Balenciaga because of A, they simply don't know. Like maybe they're just like so far into another realm that they literally had no idea. I don't, I don't believe that. Like Kim Kardashian knew she literally addressed it. But 
you know, that? Or, or do you think they just simply don't care and they want to support the brand? They love the brand. Do you think B, it's all about the money, 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 money? Or do you think C? Okay, do you think it's C? Do you think it's something more dark, more sinister, something that I would never even think in a million years? Like, do you think there's something going on there? Or D, do you think it's a little bit of everything? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. And then there's like the wider question of like, what does this say about Hollywood? What does this say about the people and Hollywood in general? It's easier for me to have the stance that I have because I never really had any skin in the game. You know, I was never Balenciaga's biggest fan. Like, if you've been with me for a while, you know that in my 20s, I've, I had over, probably all of two pieces from Balenciaga, the sock boot that I sold and a Balenciaga jacket that I actually wanted to sell before the controversy. And then after the controversy happened, I was like, oh no, no way in hell can I sell this now because nobody's gonna wanna pay anything for it. But yeah, I'm just not Balenciaga's biggest fan. I never really have been. So it's easy for me to have the stance that I have. But, you know, obviously this is a different level of an example, but sometimes I wonder, you know, I'm a big fan of Apple's products. If something really bad came out about Apple that I just couldn't ignore, would I stop using Apple? You know, I, I'm not a big Samsung user. I don't like Samsung personally. And I think I would have trouble switching over to another brand just because I find Apple to be very convenient. So, I mean, would I put my morals and values aside? It's hard, it's hard. Like, honestly, I'm, I've never been in the position. I've never been in the position really that I can think of where one of my favorite brands or something that I use every day or, or wear every day or love every day had something so, you know, scandalous tied to it. So it's hard for me to say, but like, I like to think I would stand against and, and stop supporting. But I really think it depends on a case by case, case basis, you know? Like the Apple example. I, I mean, call me horrible, but I think I might probably still, still use my Apple device. And again, it's a very different example, obviously. And again, I think it depends what the scandal was, what the incident was. It's really interesting to think about. I love kind of to play this like what if game. I know some people who are very logical and live in reality don't play it. Like I try to play it sometimes with like men in my life. And I've noticed men are more like black and white. I mean, sometimes my experience, they're more black and white. And like, I'm like, but what if this? And they're like, but it didn't happen. I'm like, yes, yes, but let's play the what if game. Okay, the what if game is one of my favorite. What if? And like, but it's hard for me. It just didn't happen. So I, I, it's, yeah, it's, it's really tricky. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this in the comments down below. Was it easier for you to not support Balenciaga because you weren't already a fan? Like, were you a big fan of, like, if you were someone who was a big fan of Balenciaga, are you still a big fan of them? Are you not? I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. We think about brands like Gucci and Dolce & Gabbana. They were once upon a time involved in some scandals involving race and racism. And you know, they were in some really hot water. Now, not so much. Close out today's video. I think a running theme that appears in a lot of my videos and just a lot of my thoughts regarding things like this is just human beings are highly complicated, very complicated creatures. We're a very complicated species. We're highly irrational, we're highly emotional creatures. We are living in a highly complicated, frankly corrupt and just weird world, okay? A strange, strange world. I'm in two minds, okay? When I personally see someone in the street, I'm not spitting on them, I'm not yelling at them like a psychopath, I'm not even giving them a foul look. But I'd be lying to you if the thought, like I can't help it, it's just involuntary, I can't help it. But the thought pops into my head that I'm like, ooh, that's a bold choice. That is the bold choice. I can't help it. It's just, it's just what I, it's just what I think. I don't look at that person and think, oh my God, they must be evil. And at the end of the day, like I don't have the emotional energy to, you know, spew hate in someone's comment section for wearing Balenciaga or go off on them for, for still supporting Balenciaga. I don't have that in me to have that hate fest drop inside me. People are not black and white. Situations are not black and white. Two or even more than two things can be true at the same time. I'd love to hear your thoughts in this comments down below. Has your opinion of Balenciaga changed over the last year? You know, did you have one opinion of them in the beginning when it first came out? How do you feel about them now? Do you still have this pushback? Do you still have this kind of dislike for celebrities or people who wear Balenciaga or support Balenciaga? Do you kind of not care? Do you not have the emotional energy for it? I don't think this makes you a bad person. We cannot have the, the emotional energy for everything that just festers up inside us. It's just way too much hatred for one human being and I think it's it's just not good. So of course, you know, you're not a bad person if you simply don't care anymore. I personally believe I don't think we have the emotional energy to care about everything, especially when we're just trying to get through life, okay, our lives. So yeah, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Everything that I shared today, anything that stands out for you, please share with me your thoughts on this. And yeah, do you think that they'll just be like Dolce & Gabbana and Gucci and all the other brands that have ever had scandals or controversies? You know, do you think that, and if, you know, I see another Kardashian wedding in the future, personally. Do you think that maybe one day Kim will get married and Balenciaga will sponsor her entire wedding like Dolce & Gabbana did and no one will 
say a word. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this in the comments down below. I have another few links for you right here if you haven't had enough of me just yet, feel free to jump over there. Thank you so much for joining me in today's video and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.